Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. Thanks for joining us for another video. There's plenty of Manchester United news to get through in today's video, so make sure you get involved in the comments below. First of all, I'm going to start with that Manchester United are looking for a new training ground and moving away from Carrington. First thoughts on that? Oh, long overdue. I thought this should have happened years ago, but as we know, uh, United are slow at everything. Uh, spending money now on Carrington, waste of time uh, when they're looking for somewhere else. New owners well, I say new owners, Jim Ratcliffe's coming in now, having a full look at everything what's going on. So I think this will be uh, fast forwarded as quickly as possible. Yeah, it's be interesting to see as well who foots the bill because uh, it seems so Jim Ratcliffe's going to be footing it as well with the 300 million investment. How much of that's going to be looking to go uh, to a new training facility? Well, you never know. Jim Ratcliffe's got interests at Carrington. He's got shale gas underneath. So he might just buy... Uh, Carrington, uh, and then move on to a new training ground. So not a bad move, uh, if that's possible. Yeah, we have mentioned that story in the past. I think we mentioned it in May. These but, billionaires, they do look long term. Yep. And you never know who the next prime minister is, what laws will be passed, what laws will be changed. Opportunities. S opportunities galore there, possibly for Sir Jim Ratcliffe. And I will actually put a link in the video description if you want to find out more about that shell gas uh, underneath Carrington because it is a, it is a good read. Um, so, yeah, do you think it's something that's beneficial for Manchester United? Yeah, it's positive. It's, it's what you need. It's something brand new, you know, mass, massive club, biggest club in the world as far as I, I see and a lot of other people. So they need top-class facilities and they haven't been at Carrington for a long time. And as we know, Cristiano Ronaldo pointed them facts out to everybody. So it's been clear for a long time they need to move from there and they need to reset and get something what is top class going forward. Yeah, just to read a little bit of that report as well on the search for new training facilities. Uh, Chief Operating Officer Colette Roach is overseeing the project and from 2002 she brought in Mags Murnahan from Leicester City to work alongside her. Uh, the Midlands Club's infrastructure director designed the Foxes' new 185 acre training ground widely regarded as one of the best in the country. It features 14 pitches, elite sports science, and medical facilities and customized gym hydrotherapy areas. It is built on the site of a former golf club, it features a nine hole course as well. Sounds very nice. And uh, that's it, what Man United are looking at as well. Golf courses, buying them up in the South Manchester area as well. So might uh, not be too far from where we are. No, might not be. Uh, sounds as though they've got the right bloke, uh, the right plans. Everything uh, seems to be uh, ready. Just got to find somewhere to do it now. Ben Jacobs has reported as well about the search for a new CEO at Manchester United. And he says he understands John, Pla John Claude Blanc sorry, is now unlikely to become Manchester United's CEO. He is expected to remain at Ineos and the CEO of Sport. And within provisional plans, will not necessarily carry a job-specific Manchester United title. No, he just seems to be at the moment. Uh, he was at the Wigan game. You know, David Gill was with him, Patrick Stewart, Murto, and that. And I think, you know, he like like he says there, and I've said he's going to remain with Ineos. And I think he's just overseeing the search for the new CEO. Uh, he's going to be on the board, part of the football strategy. Mm. That's what he's looking at, which is good. The more football people you get in, uh, the better. It's what's missing at Manchester United. But he is not going to have the CEO's job. I think his role, very important role, being on the board mm. and actually overlooking, uh, overseeing, shall I say, uh, what the CEO is doing and on other people in the football world. Yeah, I agree with that, especially with the experience he's got getting Juventus back from when they got relegated. He was a big part of that as well. He's obviously been at PSG, so he's been at big clubs before, knows how things operate on the actual football pitch. And hopefully we can actually get a CEO where the main focus or the background has been to do with the football more so than the actual commercial side. And Colette Roach, who we've mentioned before, her name has been banded about over the last 24, 48 hours. But if she was to be put in as the CEO, I'd like some John claude Blanc to have like the role at the top where she's probably reporting to him or he's got the oversight. Well, I, I personally don't want anybody within the club uh, being put in a higher position. I actually do believe mm -hmm. uh, that what's name it, the changes have to come, uh, but not from within. I think too many people have been sat there in Old Trafford uh, just getting the wages, looking after themselves. And I think any appointment uh, into a senior role going forward should come from the outside. We need new blood in this place. We need someone to look at it completely different. 
Yeah, like we'll talk about the financial court, the first one, you know, we are making record profits in that area of the club. But, you know, in the football side, that is the main thing where we need changes and we need people who are coming in with the actual football knowledge in changing it round on the club on that sort of side. Now, just going on to Sir Dave Brailsford, it's been widely reported over the last 24, 48 hours again that the changes that are going to be made, you've mentioned it before, sackings, you ought to see lots of him. Yeah. And these reports are saying that he expects to be brutal with his sackings as well. Well, to be honest with you, I like those words, brutal. There's no messing around. It's it's what's needed. Brutal changes ahead. Uh, and anything less than brutal uh, is not acceptable in my world. It's what's needed at Manchester United. Brutal in every department. Changes have to be made. And when you go back to uh, Colette there, she needs not to be moved up. Things Changes need to be done. And so Dave Brailsford, if you look at him, He's been round Carrington since the moment he's got here. He's been all over the mm. club. Uh, he seems to be looking into every department. He's got uh, Jean-Claude Blanc now alongside with him. And th they are going to make changes. Mm. And to be honest with you, and I have said it for, a, for quite a while now, changes have to come. Mass sackings have to come mm. in every department. And these reports, what I'm reading, what you've read, uh, that there, there is in every department going to be brutal changes. And that is what is needed. I, I totally agree, it is needed, but with Sir Jim Ratcliffe, he's got control of the football operations. You know, will, will he del be able to delve into, let's say, the commercial department? Because let's face it, it is an absolute juggernaut, you know, with the profits that it can make Manchester United Football Club. And it's whether it's, well, it's, we've got to wait and see if uh, he'll have oversight on making changes there. I don't think he will. I think he'll be just giving the actual football operations in making changes there. You know, John Murto, everyone keeps mentioning his name. Yeah. How long has he got left at the football club? Would it even surprise you if he's still here in 12, 18 months' time? Well, this reports there of Murto wanting to stay on and that, uh, and that in, my, in, in my world, is not acceptable. He's been part of the problem for mm. a long time. He has had jobs inside United and he keeps getting promoted up the ladder uh, with no actual uh, CV for it all. And we all, we can go on and on and on about he's done this, he's done that, he's done that. We know he's been poor. He wants to keep his job uh, like any man would. But at the end of the day, he has to go. Uh, and the quicker the better. But I think he'll just be here for uh, another month or two uh, until uh, what's name, Jim Ratcliffe gets his foot in. But it's the CEO, that's the problem. Will he have, will Sir Jim Ratcliffe have the overall shout on that. And I don't think so, like I said before. No. I think the Glazers look at it because at the end of the day, record revenues again in the first quarter, mass, massive uh, intake of uh, sales in the mega store and everything else like that. So at the end of the day, that's part of the CEO's, jo CEO's job. Uh, and that's what the uh, Glazers love. And they're looking at the money. So Jim Ratcliffe might not be able to get everything he wants when it's actually uh, passed through the Premier League process. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think it did say in the report as well, in regards to the CEO, the Glazers will have a shout on who also will be the new CEO. So it won't be just Sir Jim Ratcliffe's decision and his final decision as well. So it re remains to be seen who they will actually pick for that job. You know, is, is there many out there you can think of? They might make an internal promotion inside Manchester United. Like we say, that Colette Roach, who knows? To be honest, you know, I think a lot of people out there would have been looking at it and thinking this CEO should have already been in place. Uh, it just seems to be dragging on. So I hope they get who they want, the first target, and no messing about. But with the Glazers, you know what happens. Things ain't done quickly. But it's a CEO we need in charge of this football club quickly. We need proper people in place. Uh, but the good thing is, Brailsford and Jean-Claude Blanc, they've got the oversight uh, on the football inside of it. And they've also got the CV for it. So going forward, I think they'll turn it and it's the football side we need to see uh, changing uh, and changing quickly. Moving on to the uh, first quarter results. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, well, I, I looked at him, uh, I glanced at him, shall I say, and straight away, I just looked at it and went, mega store sales, massive, massive improvement. Uh, and to be honest with you, when you look at that massive improvement of sales in the megastore, that's a proper kick in the fans, in the face of the fans uh, who want people to boycott. It's never going to happen. And we've always said that. 
you know, the mega store is there. This is a global brand. Uh, and on top of that, you've got the global brand. Global memberships are improving. I mean, you know, fans from abroad all over, all over the world uh, are just buying up the memberships. I mean, you can be cynical from one point of view. A lot of Galatasaray fans bought memberships, you know. So they were uh, all over the Old Trafford, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. In every but, stand around yeah, Old Trafford when they played like When you're playing uh, Champions League football and that, you know, they're a bit savvy uh, fans around the world now. And they're thinking, oh, I'll get in Old Trafford, buy a membership. Uh, and United will just take the money anyway. But there is an uptake in the global. Uh, and possibly when you look at it going forward, that's the improvement in revenue and income that people who are dealing with the uh, with the Glazers and all that can see what's coming, what's on offer in the future. Whereas we can't, uh, you know, we're football fans. We like to concentrate on the pitch. But at the end of the day, the value of Manchester United keeps increasing and increasing and increasing. Uh, and that's just the way it is. And that's why you see a lot of people who just look at us getting bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger off the pitch. And they all want to be Manchester United because there is an improvement on that side of it. And it will continue because of what Man United are. Yeah, they did actually record a net loss, Manchester United, I think, of £25.8 million. Pound. Yep. But that was obviously then down to the football side of the operations yep. as well, when they factoring in transfers, etc. So even though there was record revenues on the commercial side and what the club can make on that side, still reported a, a loss. So we can't have too many of them losses and they can't really get any bigger, especially with all this FFP rules, etc. No, they can't get any bigger for United to uh, succeed on the footballing side. Things have to change. Uh, we've seen madness, and I mean, it's madness in it. We all know some of the uh, prices what have been paid for players way over the top. United had the pants pulled down mm -hmm. many, many times. They used to call it the Man United tax, but the, the way they've been paying for players over the last few years, I'd just call it absolute stupidity. Uh, and the people who have been doing these transfers, they need to be out of this club. Yeah, also said in the report on the Reuters as well, operating expenses as well as costs related to players' salaries also rose in the quarter. Yeah. But you'd expect that then in the next quarter, surely, for that to then go back down because we're just trying to shift, especially with some of the youngsters off, you know, the shifting, look, well, the wanting to by the looks of it, shift some of the older players off as well, or the big salaries. You've got Sancho, he's gone on loan, so some of his wages have gone off that. Yeah, well, the operating costs, you know, can be offset by selling youngsters and, uh, you know, mm. older players and that. But the, these older players and these youngsters should have been moved on uh, and looked at proper a long time ago. It's been poor shifting of players, youth players and things like that. Mm. Uh, but the operating costs, you know, it's the world we live in. All costs are going up for everybody. So you're going to expect an increase in business costs, running costs and everything else like that. Uh, but mm. the thing is... You know, we touched on their younger players. There's a lot of players being moved out. And I think if you look at it now, uh, you've got to look at the input of David Brailsford. He's been up up and down that Carrington there, looking at things, looking at what's going on, looking at the, the structure of the youth teams and everything else like that. And there's not a place, there's no forward movement into the first team for quite a few. And he's, he's moving them on. Uh, that's how I look at it. And I, th I think that's a good thing. These players want to play football. It's a career for them. Some some will make it and a lot of them won't. Well, mm. th there's no point hanging on to them. Get rid, yeah. get the money and get it as quickly as possible. What we've been saying about Brailsford um, being in and around the training ground. Do you think he's cycling in on his bike to Carrington or? No, <laughs> not in this weather. No, not in this weather. Uh, but I, I, I'll tell you what, I bet I'd overtake him on my bike. But yeah. Then, you know, when I go up there, I'll have a go. Yeah, but no, you've not I, got a helmet either. I bet he wears an helmet. No, he, he, he won't be going down his bike. Can't see that. Yeah. But uh, to, to be fair to him, uh, it looks as though that he is getting to work mm. uh, and he is getting all the conversations going and he is making changes uh, on, on the quiet, uh, which is good. Yeah. Uh, and all you can hope for is that when this... Uh, Injection of cash comes in from Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Everyone knows what they're going to do and the people are in place. And that's all you can hope for because clearly the commercial side of Manchester United is growing and growing and growing. And it's just on the pitch what needs. And the more success we get on that pitch, the success of it will just, just shoot right up. 
yeah. uh, and it will help United in the long run. Yeah, and this is probably what the Glazers foreseen as well. If they can get it right on the football pitch by bringing Sir Jim Ratcliffe in, the more money that goes into their back pocket long term. But that's for another show. But if you want to discuss it in the chat, get it in the chat. And anything else we've discussed today, much appreciated everyone for joining yeah. us as well. If you've enjoyed it, just smash a like on the video as well. Help support the channel that way. And we'll be back tomorrow with another video. It's either Webby and my dad Tony tomorrow or them two back on Friday. But we'll see you tomorrow regardless. Thank you. Thank you.